Hey everybody and welcome to Chairman of the Board. Today I'm going to show you how to play Xi'an, which is an area control worker placement game. Uh, it's a Euro style game, so let's show you how we set up the board to start. Um, okay, so the board looks like this. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to put these tiles um, across this top row here. And it, as you can see, it makes some kind of um, panoramic kind of um, drawing there or a bit of artwork. And then what you're going to do, depending on the number of players, you're going to take the starting two tiles. You're going to kind of draw one at random and this kind of um, dictates the initiative order and what pigment you start with. So say I drew this one. Um, I would put, as the orange player, I'd put my initiative tracker on top here. So this this kind of track here kind of breaks ties, um, and I said it's like a like a, almost like an initiative track, and um, then you're going to take the color of pigment which is um, which you've drawn. So that one I get a yellow pigment, so I'm going to get a yellow pigment and uh, put it to my starting player setup. But I'll go through that in a second. Um, okay, this one here is kind of like a round tracker. Um, the main board looks like this. So as you can see, um, these kind of sections here are modular, so you can kind of get a bit of variation in setting these up. And what I've done is I've put these um, neutral coloured terracotta soldiers on these spots that um, has this, um, this symbology on. So these are kind of neutral ones to start the board. And you've got a section C, B and A. Um, what I've also done is I've drawn these colours from the um, randomly from the pot, and they are going to dictate what colour these statues need in order to paint them your colour. Um, so, for example, in this section C, I need two blue pigments. Here, I need a red and a yellow pigment, and here, I need any colour plus a green pigment. Um, what I've also done is based on the highest number here, so the number 10, which is yellow. I've placed the Prime Minister on that colour. And these are basically four worker placement spots. And again, these are modular, so they can kind of move around and um, each game to game to make it a bit different. And um, finally, I have so obviously set my two player tokens on the score track and set up these four item cards on the bottom here. In, and obviously I've set up this deck to the side in order to replenish them later in the game. Uh, in terms of individual player setup, I have my statues in my own colour here. So I've got six of those. I've got two player aids, which are kind of useful throughout the game. I've got uh, a pack of cards and everybody's got an identical set. I've got my pigment that I've just drawn from my starting player. Two coins and a clay token. Uh, I've also got two workers which are going to, going to be used on these spots here. Okay, so the game takes place over six rounds, and in each of those six rounds, you're going to draw four cards from the top of your deck, like so. Well, this is not a particularly good example, but um, we'll go with it. So what you're going to do is, well, basically these cards hold uh, a number of different information. You, so you've got these different colors, which do different things. So you've got these tax collectors here that give you money. You've got um, these kind of green cards that give you um, almost like permanent powers throughout the game. And as you see, the later you play them in the game, just say I played this card in round six, I'm going to get six points from that card um, as well as the power. So basically the later you play the card, um, obviously the less you're going to get benefit of its power, but you're going to get more points um, to uh, counteract that. So as I said, you're going to put them into two pairs of two as you see fit. So say for example, I did this and, and this. And what that means is that basically I'm going to play this card, or this card's going to be activated, but at this initiative. So this number kind of um, dictates how quickly you're going to get to pay, play your card. Um, of the higher number, the better. Um, so I can choose to take this power here, or I can choose to always take this pigment instead if I don't want that. Um, so basically, yeah, so each there's going to be six rounds, and in each of those six rounds you're going to play um, two sets of cards. So let's go through some of the cards and see what they do. So these green cards, as I said, are like technology. So basically when you buy an equipment card, you pay one coin less. These tax collectors give you money. You've got other different technology guys here, such as um, when you move forward on the supervisor track, you can exchange one resource for general stock um, for another. That one there lets you kind of craft warriors for cheaper. You've got these ones here that just give you pigments. You get other smaller tax, tax collectors, um, other tax collectors, more pigments. These craftsmen here give you more bricks. 
and um, so on. So basically, the kind of weaker the card is, the kind of lower the initiative, and the stronger the card is, the stronger the initiative. So you've got to really kind of balance those cards and um, you know get the most out of them. And there's just a few more of the cards there. So a lot of them are very similar, but slightly different powers. Okay, so after you've played um, one of your sets of cards, you are going to come here and place one of your workers on one of these worker placement spots. So let's go through those now. So this one here, this um, kind of building one, lets you move up the um, mausoleum track here, which is this one here. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take your worker, you're gonna move it up and you're gonna take one of these tiles. Um, there'll be enough here for all the players, but I've just set it up like this just for ease. Um, so this one here, you're going to uh, basically, when you, um, when you basically share a worker placement spot with someone else, so say, um, say, say Blue was here initially, and then I went there afterwards, I would have to pay them a coin um, because they got in there before me. If I had this tile, then I can ignore that, so I don't need to pay that coin, but this is a one-off benefit. Um, furthermore, these worker placement spots are restricted. Um, basically, in a two-player game, only, only three people or three workers can go on those two tiles. If there was four players, only five could go in those two tiles. And the same goes with this pair here as well. So they are very tight and you want to get in there quickly. Um, the one with the Prime Minister on, you are going to, if you're the first one on that tile, you are going to get a point and a coin. So it's just another incentive to go there. So anyway, the, the, uh, the mausoleum track here, you've got all these different tiles. And if you don't use that benefit at the end, you're gonna get one point for each, uh, each one you've got left over in your supply. So as I said, that one here, that one lets you do what I just said. That one lets you kind of swap goods for another two goods. This one here lets you get a discount on something. This one here gives you an extra worker placement go. And these end game ones here, um, kind of just give you different strategies to work towards. But obviously you need to get to the top of the track um, before you get one of these. Um, so for example, you can get one point per resource. Uh, you get four, plus four points for a couple of uh, the same equipment. You've got plus three points for unused mausoleum tile. So that's a good one if you get all these tiles and don't use them. And plus two points per helper played. And those are those green cards. So that's how the, the track works. And that obviously breaks initiative as well, which is quite important because if say someone played an initiative of two, you also played an initiative of two, then you are going to trump them if you are higher on the track. Uh, this, the second spot here lets you build a terracotta warrior. And you do that by um, trading in, um, you trade in clay to do so. So if I wanted to build a terracotta in section A here, then I would trade in two clay. I would take a neutral terracotta soldier and place it on any of these spots and get the rewards that are on those spots instantly. So I can get three points in a coin, three points, five points, two points, three points and two coins, four points and a pigment. So that's a good way to get points. Um, if you want to, you can place one of your um, unique kind of symbols here, which I should have showed you in the initial player setup. Um, and you can put them under your kind of worker that you under your soldier you've just built, which means nobody else can paint it. But I'll go through that in a second. So that's how building um, building soldiers works. So obviously, the higher you get on these tracks, uh, the more points or, or, or each section gets more expensive because three three clay and five clay. But you're going to get a lot more points by placing them. Um, this worker placement spot here lets you paint the soldiers. So what you're going to do is you're going to refer to this kind of segment here, which, which shows which pigments you need to paint them. Um, if you do have that pigment, then you can trade it in and replace one of these, um, one of these terracotta soldiers with one of your own like that. And you're going to get a point for each, um, for each one you line up. So say I had that one there, I'm going to get one point. If I later painted this one like this, I would then get an additional two points. And so basically the more kind of orthogonal you, you paint them, you're gonna get more and more points accumulating. Um, furthermore, you're gonna to want to paint them because these areas all count for area control at the end of the game. So if you have the most colored soldiers of your color in this section, you're gonna get 10 points. The second person is gonna get five points and the last player is gonna get two points and so on. And as you can see, these points get more and more um, or larger amount of points the higher up the up the kind of board it goes. So the C is a lot more expensive and a lot more lucrative. 
And the final worker placement spot is this, um, this place where you pick up equipment guards. And this is a very basic set collection me mechanism where all you do is you basically trade in your money here. So these cost money, so three coins, whatever. And you're gonna pick up one of these cards and put it in front of you um, for end game scoring. So basically there's two different types. There's these bronze types and there's these wood types. And um, basically there's three types of each and the back of the card illustrates this quite well. Um, so if you get a horse, a chariot and a crossbow, then you're gonna get the full set and according to your little, um, your little reference sheet here, um, you're gonna get uh, two points if you have just one of them, five points if you have two of them, and 10 points if you have all three of them. So basically, if you have all three of the wood cards, all three of the bronze cards, then you're gonna get an additional 20 points at the end of the game. Now, furthermore, you can see these have a number on them, or a letter on them, sorry, so like C, C, um, and B. Uh, if you have a soldier of your color in that section, then you can basically equip them with these cards for an additional three points each. So another way to get points at the end of the game. Um, fundamentally, that's everything you need to know about the game. Um, it's a very quick game. It plays right, those six rounds really do fly by very quickly. Um, at the end of each round, these cheaper, or the cheapest kind of pigment here, so this three, is gonna get replaced by another one from the pot like so, um, that's gonna be kind of the round tracker. And then the, the one that's just gone missing is going to be where the prime minister is going to go next turn. And that's how you play Xi'an. It's a really good game. Check out my review if you haven't seen my review of it because I really do rate this. Um, and it's a really nice game that's kind of flown under the radar. That's Xi'an.